The price of some of the cards on the market right now are ridiculously low. It's absolutely insane. It's the cheapest they've been pretty much all year, and the time to buy is right now. So make sure you watch to the end of today's video. If you're looking to buy cheap and reliable FC24 coins, look no farther than my partner, Futler, and use my code ELITE, E-L-Y-Y-T, for an extra 6% at checkout. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates it. We are continuing through the Winter Wild Cards promo, and as we exit this weekend, we are starting to see some of the cards we invested in earlier this weekend go up in price. The market is recovering, but there are still a lot of cards dropping. We're not seeing a huge rise in the market like we expected, just a small one. But before we get into the overall market, let's talk about a new glitch that might still work for you guys by the time you watch this. It's big for any of you guys that have notifications on because as of the time I'm recording this, this still works. But if you are to go on to the market and buy 50 bronze cards, and then you can just list those 50 bronze cards as well, you're going to complete the objective, which is Winter Wild Cards Trader. In the Winter Wild Cards Trader objective, it's going to give you a ton of different rewards, including the player picks and packs, which have already been added into my club. I've opened these. I've packed a few team of the week, some fodder cards, nothing insane out of them. But the trick is once you complete this once, all you need to do, and this is no joke, is buy one bronze card off the market and list that bronze card again. You do that four times, you get all of these packs four more times. All these player picks, all these boosts, all these rewards, you're going to get five times total. And so that 83 plus times five turns into 83 plus times 25. And of course, all those player picks as well. So you might as well go out and do that. Try it out. If it still works, let us know down in the comments if you try it out and it doesn't work anymore. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the investments we made in the last episode and shortly afterwards as we clear everything off the transfer list. But if you're excited for today's episode, do not forget to drop a like on this video. It would help me out a ton because when you guys interact with the video, it helps the algorithm. It like tricks YouTube into thinking I'm a better YouTuber than I actually am. So if you want to help me out with that, you can just drop a like right now. So we invested in Barella, this card, at 280,000 coins, and it's looking pretty good. These cards are on their way up, and we know that they're going to keep going as Monday and Tuesday are normally the days in the market when cards rise the most. But are they up as much as we want them to be up? Well, I'd say probably not, especially with that Phil Foden card, who we got for 147,000 coins. And if we take a look at this entire team of the group stage prices and we refresh real quick, this Barella right now, 282, that's a little lower than what we've seen. He is over 290. I've seen him above 300, but we're actually not really even making profit on that card if you consider tax. So that's kind of an L. And then when we looked at Phil Foden, he's dropped a little bit into the night. I clicked on the wrong card. Phil Foden is losing us coins right now. So one of the reasons that we're losing coins is, one, we didn't sell when we had profit. He was about 160. And two, when Kai Havertz was about to come out, this card crashed down to like 125. But then Kai Havertz ended up being a left back. This new SBC, he's a left back. And so I've been waiting for this card to rebound. It might not happen. So we might actually lose some coins on Foden. But we are making some good coins on Nick Pope. This card is selling for about 18K right now. And we have dozens of him. So we're not looking too bad in that regard. We do have some cards on our transfer list that are making us bank right now. As these Nick Popes, we picked up for 14 to 15K when they were still in packs. And we've got so many of them right now. So we're looking great in that regard. But there's one other thing on my transfer list right now. I've got some of right now, and that is fodder because it is cheaper than it's been since the pre-release of the game. When you guys got the ultimate edition of the game, we saw the price of fodder. It was so, so low. Well, it hasn't been back down to that price since then until now. We are looking at some insane prices for fodder. And when I'm saying uh, go all in. I'm not joking. This is a time in which you can spend, whether it's 300K that you have, 3 million that you have, or 30 million coins, you can put every last penny that you have into fodder cards 
and you will make profit. Now, as we get closer to team of the year, of course, fodder is going to be at a premium because there are going to be a ton of upgrade SBCs. There's going to be a lot of player SBCs. And if fodder cards are more expensive, it's going to make FC points a little bit more desirable. So when we're looking at some of these cards, you've got 87 rated cards at 12,000 coins right now. Let's take a look at what these cards uh, that are 12,000 coins were going for last week. Well, 18 to 19,000 coins were just uh, at that price a few weeks ago. He was about 15K um, about a week ago. That's a great price. But is that going to be the best return on investment? Well, we can take a look at some of these 86 rated cards who are 7,000 coins right now and have peaked at 16K. That is more than double and they've been at about 13 to 14,000 coins a couple times this year so you're looking at a card that hasn't been this cheap since early October and is now back down to 7,000 coins it is worth going all in on these 86 rated cards and you can kind of pick what you think is going to be the highest ROI or what makes the most sense for you if you don't want to go unassigned and you have a lot of coins maybe you go for some of the cards that are a little bit more expensive they're not going to be the best return on investment in terms of percentage but they might be higher in total coins like these 88 rated cards could easily go to 25 26 thousand coins from the 19k they're at which is 6 thousand coin profit so those cards could go up slightly more maybe than the 85 rated cards but if 85s go from four to six thousand coins well, that's a 50 percent rise that's not a 50 percent rise in the 88s so even though it's only 2k versus 6k the percentage is actually higher on 85 so you can divvy it up however you want but all i'm saying right now is fodder is very low risk and there are certain ratings that just make sense 84s were a little bit lower so maybe 1.8 is a little bit too much on 84s but 85s absolutely uh no risk 86s absolutely no risk 87s pretty much no risk as well i've got some 87s on my transfer list already and even 89s are starting to look better because those cards peak at like 38 39 pretty often uh and then of course 83 rated cards are no risk and actually have the biggest upside because if we take a look at 83 rated cards well they have peaked at over 2,000 coins a couple of times this year it's only a matter of time before it happens again. So it might be a waiting game, but you can easily double your coins if you just take the time to buy thousands and thousands of those cards. But that's a lot of blue collar work for your coins. What if we can make some investments that don't take too long and end up working out just fine? What you're looking at right now is Winter Wild Cards FIFA 23. And the reason I bring this up is because it gives us an idea on what these cards are going to do over the course of FC24 as well. If we take a look at Furland Mendy, this card got to its cheapest point on Sunday, Monday, actually started going up by Tuesday, and that card continued to rise all the way until early January. Kevin De Bruyne, same thing, Monday, his lowest point, Tuesday, pretty cheap still, rose all the way until early January. Fikeo Tomori, maybe not quite as much, but definitely hit that lower point early in the week and rose later in the week. Out of packs, not as successful as the other cards, still went pretty high late February, early March, but we'll get into that in a second. And Golo Kante, exact same thing, hit the low point on Monday, Tuesday uh, at the low point and rose all the way up to over a million coins by the early times of January. So why did these winter wild cards go up before they were even out of packs? Well, let's take a look at some of these cards and maybe we can figure out why? Well, we've got a lot of cards in here that have already been dropped into packs so much early in Winter Wild Cards. We've seen a lot of tradable packs in the store early on this weekend that have added more supply to Winter Wild Cards than we've seen added to some of the previous promos like Radioactive or Dynasties or Thunderstruck, etc. So a lot of these cards might be a little bit cheaper than what they would have been, of course, without those extra packs. And so these cards could actually rise later in the week. And so when we look at Eder Militao, we could probably compare that to Furland Mendy of last year. The prices weren't all that different. Maybe, uh, you know, off by a couple hundred K, but they were several hundred thousand coins. That card hit his low point on Sunday, Monday, and then started rising 
on Tuesday, getting all the way from 517,000 coins to 664K in just about a week and a half. And so that's a huge rise in that kind of card. We look at some of those elite cards like Cristiano Ronaldo. Well, he was selling for 4 million coins on day one. So there is demand for that card. And then Alexia Puteas, who doesn't have any other special cards out in the game right now, could do really well out of packs. But it doesn't just have to be those cards that are absolutely elite. We can take a look at some of the cards that aren't as good, like Jack Butland. And here's the reason why we actually invested in Nick Pope. Well, he hit his low point on Monday, Tuesday as well and rose out of packs even better than some of the big cards. This card went from 34,000 coins, peaked at 61K before dropping in mid to late January. But let's talk about that drop right there. Why did this card hit a peak in early January, mid January, and then start dropping uh, in you know January 20th, January 25th? Why did that card go down? Well, of course, it was because of Team of the Year. That's when Team of the Year comes, is mid-January. And so the hype of Team of the Year is going to bring the entire market back down. So we definitely want to sell these cards in early January and then buy back before they rise even more going into February. So that's going to be something that we bring back up later in um, you know, January. We're going to talk about when we sell these cards. But the answer to when we buy these cards is actually going to be today and tomorrow. Pick up your cards on Christmas. It's your Christmas present of profit. Winter wild cards look like they're going to be cheapest today because considering that we've got the combination of one, the prediction of the past being the fact that they were at the cheapest point on Monday of Tuesday of last year. And if we take a look at this promo last year, it was on the same days. If we take a look at the first week of release, look at this Furland Mendy. Friday the 23rd was actually Friday the 22nd this year. So, with that being said, it's only one day difference. It came out the exact same week last year. It's the exact same promo, and we probably are going to see the exact same trend. Unless EA, of course, throws some sort of curveball that we are not expecting. But I think it's a pretty safe investment. Try to get as low as you can over the next 24 hours. Monitor the cards you want to buy. Even the ones on the bench, like Alex Balde, is a pretty good card to look at. Grimaldo might be a solid one. And Enzo Fernandez. All cards that are more in the low to medium budgets. And then those medium budgets like Alex Morgan, who hasn't had a special card yet this year either. And then Rafinha. Those are pretty affordable cards. Even Dabala could go up. So most of these cards, ooh, Lorente as well. I like that card. All of these cards will probably end up making us profit, and I don't think we wait till Thursday, Friday this week. So the investments are actually going to come right now. Pick up your winter wild card. Today we get Del Piero's SBC, which I can't see move the market too much, but Kevin Mbabu does have one link that we can look forward to and maybe could go up in price because of that SBC. And Babu is a right back, but with this Winter Wild Cards promo, he could literally be anywhere. I mean, they even put Van Nistelrooy in goalkeeper. So who knows where Mbappé is going to be on the pitch. But Vargas is also at Augsburg and in Bundesliga from Switzerland. So with that being said, this card, which isn't that expensive, he's going for about 15,000 coins right now. You're not looking at a ton of risk. I've been picking him up for under 15k. 15,000 is the most I've paid for him. I only have like seven right now. I might buy some more in the morning. But I wouldn't be spending more than 15k. And another thing that I'm probably going to do is sell into the hype of this SBC. I'm probably not going to hold until the SBC comes out because if that Mbabu is one, a left wing for some reason, or two, really bad value or a really bad card, then that Vargas is just going to come right back down in price. So we got to be very careful. One thing we can consider is that that Vargas card has already gone up about two or 3,000 coins. So if we look forward maybe to next week and see some of the cards that are actually going to get released into SBCs, like this Crepin Diata, and you can do the same thing for John Stones or Chirio Mobile, etc., is we can find some of the cards that haven't risen into the hype yet and we can buy beforehand. We might have to hold a little bit longer, but more profits will be there for us. So with the Senegal links from Diata in the French League, there's not a lot of French players or not a lot of Senegalese players in the French League that link to them, but we do have really, really good usable cards like Dia from the Radioactive promo. His card looks cracked, and if you can get that Senegalese link, that's actually really, really good. And then Koulibaly, of course, that FC Pro card, which could get upgraded even higher 
higher when his FC Pro player plays later in January. So both of those cards right now are really, really low risk investments, but you do have to be careful about holding the cards into the actual SBC because if the SBC comes out and it's bad value, then the cards go right back down in price. But we have seen some really good value SBCs that bring the cards up in price in the past, in this year, uh, we, we saw like uh, Megan Rapinoe's uh, SBC earlier this year brought the price of Sophia Smith up from 400k to like 800k in just an hour. So that is something to look out for, guys. It happens, and it is an absolute jackpot when it does. So let's go ahead and end this video with the new Winter Wild cards coming on Friday. It's the new promo. There's going to be two teams, of course. So Doku's going to be in the uh, promo and in Kunku. Very good cards right there. You've also got Alaba coming into the promo. And then you've got Mukiele, another French player. Tap Soba which is going to be a uh, Bundesliga card that could possibly link as well to the Augsburg link. Zakaria with the Swiss link, of course, to that Diata. So there's a couple cards that actually could link to that Diata come Friday, but that SBC is coming past Friday. It'll be on, uh, what is the uh, the first? It's uh, Monday the, the first. So that's not going to come out until after those cards are out. So those actually give a couple more options to link with on Monday, January 1st, because those cards come out on Friday when Ian Wright actually drops. So that's the schedule right now. That's what we're expecting for content. If you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, because we're getting closer to 150,000 subscribers. That'd be absolutely awesome if we could hit it uh, here soon. Probably not going to happen before New Year, but hey, you never know. It could. So make sure to drop that sub down below. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.